good to see you again right. after all these years. Yeah. It's pretty much ready to go back on the road, but... SD1, right? You're quite badly corroded on there, so it lost all the fixing holes both sides. A lot of our customers have got a classic car, a normal car as well. We've got all the diagnostic equipment. So this one is an Escort-shaped Series 1 E-Type. Yeah. The rally car. Historic spec. Historic spec, yeah. Yeah. This was an actual rally car back in the day. Just sort of accumulating its own rust pile. <laughs> Cosy powered Mark II, eight injectors, which is like RS500 spec. This was the car that inspired me to have like a proper carbon interior. A Holy Grail, BDA lump, 25 on the road. 25 worldwide, yeah. Yeah. Out we go in the RS1800. I'll give you Roger and Cat for this car. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and in the last video we went to see my friend Gary Ball to get an update on his 800 horsepower twin turbo LS V8 powered Mark 1 Escort <coughs> TVR. Well that wasn't the only stop we made that day because we also went to see my friend Stuart who I met years ago but hadn't seen for a number of years. Stuart owns a garage in Gosport called Newtown Motor Engineering and he invited me down to check out his business but also to have a look around his really cool fleet of old school cars. In amongst his fleet was a few old school Ford Escorts, one of which is literally the holy grail of all Mark IIs. Welcome to Newtown Motor Engineering. All right, Stuart, good to see you Hello. again after You're all these years. Yeah, long time Thanks no for see. inviting us down. Now, I've actually already been here for ages talking to Stuart about cars. You are, admittedly, a Cosworth man at heart. Yeah, deep down, yeah. I amongst other things, but Cosworth's <laughs> mainly. Yeah. So what, is, th is this your car or is this customer car over here? Yeah, Escort Cosworth, I've had it for about 10 years or so. It was a kind of shell that was um, needing uh, interior and stuff like that, and lots of finishing off wheels and rebuilt the engine, so. It's pretty much ready to go back on the road, but I just I swapped the gearbox out for a better gearbox recently, which is on the pallet over there. I've decided to go for a hydraulic setup rather than a cable. First time I've really had it in a road car mm. uh, with a hydraulic setup. It's on my Mark II rally car, works okay, so I thought I'd try it on the Cosworth stuff. But yeah, other than that, it's all, all pretty much complete. I upgraded the brakes on it not so long ago. Wheel woods on the front and back. Yeah, big brakes. <laughs> What rims are these? Oh, Compromotive. Yeah, MO ones, the uh, older style ones. All right, cool. Yeah, I love an Escort Cosy. What colour is that? Uh, that's that like dark aubergine colour. It almost looks black, but yeah. in the sunlight, it's, it's quite a lighter colour. Ah, very nice. Uh, over here, this is a customer's SD1, right? Yeah, this has got the um, rubber like bib spoiler underneath, a bit like the that same stuff the RS2000 nose cones are made yeah. out of, so. That would have um, been there, yeah. But basically, it's quite badly corroded on there, so it lost all the fixing holes both sides. Right. And um, the bumper didn't even fill on the floor, so it's just come in for some light structural stuff on the front end. All right, cool. A lot of our customers have got, you know, classic cars in the background and uh, a normal car as well for their daily. So this one, he's got an over 8, 820 turbo as well, the old coupe ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was an ex-police car. We look after that one as well. And this is a V8, yeah? This is a 3.5 V8, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it, actually, it, it actually drives and runs okay. It's a nice nice car, really, but the body works a little bit British Lane and D, so. so. Yeah, it's fair to say that uh, you work on modern stuff as well as classic stuff. Yeah, we've got all the diagnostic equipment for new stuff day to day, so. Cool. Um, but I do prefer working on the older cars. I like to be able to see an engine inside an engine bay. Yeah. Uh, not see a load of plastic covers. Mm. We'll gloss past this for a minute, if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, we've got a TVR 350i. It's not the first TVR we've seen today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although this one is an Escort shaped. This is a customer's car, right? Yeah, customers, last six months or so, MOT expired and 
he ran out of time and developed a couple of oil leaks and a couple of electrical bits on it, nothing super oh, right. serious, indicator and stuff like that. So yeah. the mirror's cable tied on, as you can see. And obviously this has also got a Rover V8 in it. Yeah, it's almost a very similar engine, really. So yeah. a few modifications done to this one. It's got an exhaust manifold and full system on it. Sounds pretty nice. Um, but um, yeah, it's typical sort of TVR, always needs bits doing to it. <laughs> <laughs> and behind you, there's uh, another non-Ford. And this is your own car, which you're planning to do up. Yeah, I came across it about a year or two ago. Um, yeah, about 18 months ago, 62 Series 1 E-Type. It's looking pretty sorry for itself, but it's all a complete car, matching numbers all through. I bought it as a non-runner. I've actually got it working now, so uh, it's about as much as I can do to it, really, before committing to restoring it and stripping it down. Deserves a, a good job done on it, but I can't really do that here because with day-to-day -day stuff, I haven't got the time to throw a thousand hours at it and you know get it done in the next 10 years so mm -hmm. get a few other people to help out with that and you know it just speeds the process up then yeah so. but no it's definitely going to be really special once it's restored really handy that you know you bought it complete so that all the bits are there can we have a, a peek under the bonnet <laughs> that's all the original 3.8 awesome and these are su carbs you said yeah yeah triple su's on it yeah, a couple of interesting things you were telling me about a minute ago. Uh, it's got a glass washer bottle. That's right, yeah. Maybe this... a good cling, but it is glass. <laughs> and that would have been original, which is mad. This really crazy air filter, obviously there would have been like an air box that connects to the carbs, which Stuart has That's removed. That's inside, yeah. Um, because he's actually had this thing running. But um, yeah, quite agricultural in terms of the chassis. You know, it's just box section. But um, yeah, really cool thing. <laughs> And uh, got to say, I love the old uh, centre lock wheels. <laughs> yeah, lovely, aren't they? Nah, really cool. One thing I didn't really talk about much off camera is the, the rally car. I remember seeing you posting about this on your Facebook. Yeah. Um, sort of a couple of years ago now, is it? Yeah, I stopped doing the rallying because there weren't any events on for a year or two. I had a, a misfire when I tried to start it and use it properly again. Well, there must have been a bit of a head gasket failure. And... Unfortunately, the water had leaked into the bore and rusted the bore out. Oh no! While it had been sitting parked, so uh, it's it's got damage to a liner. Lucky it's a liner block, but it's right. it's got some damage on it. So the engine's been taken out recently, um, and it's it's sitting here, sort of pending to be rebuilt and mm. had a look through. But I thought it was a straightforward head gasket change, and it it turns out not. So right. It's but a, you will be taking this back out rallying at yeah, some point ne next year or so. Yeah. Uh, no, like mad rush, but. Because obviously being a competition car, I want to try and do it properly. You know, yeah, you yeah. take shortcuts, you only end up breaking down again. So yeah. Steve at Vulcan does the engine um, and HD racing there. They, they do all the in-house tuning and building. Normally have like a, a bench dyno done there and it comes back all running and, you know, fully ready to turn key virtually. So yeah, yeah. that's the best way. Oh, that's cool. All right, it is a really cool looking thing. There's not much room here to, to view it, but, you know, with it being a rally car, it's got the rally arches and a roll cage inside and stuff. Pair of Sparco bucket seats, TRS harnesses, all the switches, aftermarket OMP steering wheel. Yeah, proper cool thing. And spec wise, you were saying this is like historic spec. Historic spec, yeah. Yeah. So it's got lots of rules and regulations of period that need to be kind of kept to. Yeah. As opposed to the modified stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Not allowed to run sequential boxes or, um, you know, Millingtons and things like that. They've got to be. Uh, of period, so yeah. late 70s, 80s, early 80s. So. No, a really cool thing. <laughs> That's not the only uh, Mark II Escort here. Oh, actually, <laughs> let's talk about the um, the other Escort Cosworth. Oh, go on then. <laughs> now, I actually remember this car from when I knew you years ago at your old place. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this was an actual rally car back in the day. Yeah, it was a Group A car. Bit battered underneath and uh, well used, but it's uh, it's all solid and complete. It's got a, all the proper cage and turrets and everything welded in. Um, but when I first got it, it was red, so I've painted it sort of all the silver with the stripes on it. Quite a few years ago now, and um, actually had it all running. But again, I had a bit of an issue with the head, the shims in the head, because it's got solid lifters on this one. Um, the head's back off it, but it's actually that's as far as I've got at the second. So um, that's another one that. Needs about a two or three weeks of work to sort of sort it out and a, probably a little bit of touching up on the paintwork now, but it mm. won't be far off. Yeah. One of the main things I did do though is convert it to rear wheel drive. Um, it's running a T5 straight cut in it rather yeah. than a four by four box. Engine is still in there, but it's just oh, the yeah. heads that's off at the second. Yeah. It's a shame, but um, yeah, 
proper tool once it's back together. Mark one over here looking sorry for itself. Yeah, pending project and just sort of accumulating its own rust pile. <laughs> Getting lighter and lighter by the day. That's it. <laughs> But it's a two-door shell, man. Like this, yeah. <laughs> make no mistake. Like it's still. No, it needs a lot of work. Yeah, it's um, on the pending pile. On the pending <laughs> pile. <laughs> Just a, a cool thing to look at for now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now over here is a car I remember very well. Your cozy powered Mark II. Actually had a joyride in this years ago. I remember it was the day before you had it mapped. I remember at the time. This felt really fast, but it was the day before it had been mapped, so it wasn't as fast as it would have been the next day. And you tell me that it's a lot faster now. <laughs> I bought a Sapphire Cosworth that was pretty well sort of spec'd up, running gear, and um, I've put the gearbox in that Escort Cosworth and the brake upgrade on that one, because it was all on that grey Sapphire. Mm -hmm. The engine now has come out of that one and gone into that one, so it's now probably about 100, 150 horsepower more than it was before. So um, you're, what is it now, like 550 or something you're saying? Uh, yeah, a good 550. It's yeah. running eight injector RS500 plenum and grey injectors and yeah. um, T4 turbo. Uh, and it's a fully uh, 10 long stud block, liner block and everything like that. So yeah, it, it goes really well. I mean, I had it in that car as a four wheel drive and we're sort of beating Tesla to solve the traffic lights. So. <laughs> Can we have a look at the lump? Yeah. yeah. There it is, Cosy YB, and as Stuart said, it's got the eight injectors, which is like RS500 spec, right? Yeah, it's basically exactly the same as a sort of um, the last spec RS500 touring car. Yeah, even got the like the old Quaif cam verniers oh, right. and stuff like that. It was fun before. I'm sure it'll be even more fun. <laughs> now, one thing I do really like about this car, obviously, it's a bit gutted on the interior and stuff, but I remember this was the car that kind of inspired me to have like a proper carbon interior. You can see it's got a carbon dash and uh, binnacle, even the uh, steering column cowling, door cards. And it's an original RS2000, so criminal offence nowadays, but yeah. when I did this 20 years ago, it was, uh, it was the in thing. Nah, I'm, I'm all about upsetting the anoraks, don't worry <laughs> about it. And um, yeah, around the back, it's even got a carbon fibre boot lid with a spoiler, carbon fibre bumpers. Yeah, this thing's awesome. I think now it's time to talk about this thing, the Holy Grail, genuine RS1800, probably the most sought after Mark II Escort you can get. Yeah, well, I've owned it a couple of years now. I was lucky enough to get one. I never thought I'd own one myself, like most people, but funny enough, I sort of had an offer to buy this about seven, eight years before, um, this exact same car, when the previous guy I bought it off, I bought it. And there was no chance I was ever going to buy it, and I thought I'd missed out on that, and then this came up on the market, and I realised it was the same car that was for sale uh, many years back, so. Uh, circumstance changed and um, had the funds available, I ended up getting it in the end. Ah, super cool. And as you were saying to me, you know, this thing hasn't been fully restored, which is rare. You know, most of them have been, you know, nut and bolt no, restored. All, all still original panels and arches and seals. Needs a bit of tidying, a little bit of, on the back of the panel there where they all go at the back of the chassis. But, yeah. it, you know, that's just, it's never been sort of played about with. So, yeah, they're any small little jobs to sort, aren't they? And you use it as well, which is, yeah, which I is use nice it. to know. Yeah, we go out and about. I do a lot of local classic things and I try to go to a lot of the main bigger events. I've uh, done the Lakes Tour in it a couple of times, similar to your uh, island run. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good, especially right. to get out there because there's so few on the road now and a lot yeah. of people you know, don't actually drive them so much nowadays. Yeah. They do own them. No, really cool, man. To me, this is like the holy grail. Like, If I played the lottery and if I won the lottery, this would be like what I'd go out and buy. <laughs> but it'd probably be wasted on me. <laughs> I'd probably ruin it. All original inside, I assume, is it? Yeah, this yeah. This is how they came, yeah? The interior is identical to a Mexico. Yeah, because um, like you were saying, they're not really that special apart from the engine, are they? Like they were just... The, the cars were Mexico's pulled off the production line. Can we have a look at the BDA? Yeah. So there it is, BDA lump. Alloy block, as you were saying to me earlier. Yeah, 16 valve head and alloy block, sort of unique to these RS1800s. This has been rebuilt, but like to standard spec, basically. Yeah, it's the original engine to the car, but it's been completely stripped and rebuilt by uh, Alan Sherwood Engines, who's like a BDA specialist. It's kind of blueprint standard spec engine, so it's, it's you know, about as safe as it can be. It's only running about 140 horsepower. Yeah. The previous owner fitted the bias pedal box. Yeah, I think just for clearance reasons, because yeah. the carbs come out on the driver's side, don't they, on these yeah. like the crossbar? Yeah, but um, yeah, it is a sort of genuine survivor car. You know, hasn't been fully restored. He did do a little bit of restoration on this 
inner wing yeah, just and made a start on this side. <laughs> someone, you know, like it was popular years ago to smooth this out. There's filler in here, you know, like all to right. make it flat and smooth. Yeah. I found the same there. But then they were getting rid of all these little creases. You remember that little crease there? Yeah. And that bit there. So that's all it is. That was a thing years yeah. ago to smooth it all out, wasn't it? Nah, really cool, man. So we were saying earlier, there's 109 of these built. Approximately, yeah. Um, and probably 25 on the road? 25 worldwide, yeah. Yeah. And uh, a lot of them are just like trailered to shows and stuff, aren't they? Like... It's the value in the engine. You know, I don't know where I'd find a replacement for that. Not an, not an original one, you just wouldn't. No. So if that engine ever did blow up, I can get a BDA brand new off the shelf. But yeah. it's, you know, like Smith & Jones ones or aftermarket manufacturers, not an original Ford block one. So that would be my main problem. And, and that's, the, that's the problem a lot of people have is that, and they don't tend to use them so much, is that it's the liability if something does go wrong, you know. Yeah, and you were saying like the earlier ones, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't have the alloy block. Yeah, I think if you remember, the very first few batch that they made, they were the steel block ones, because they were based on a 16 Sport. Um, and they made just a handful of those um, on the Mark IIs. And then they realized that there was kind of too much to convert from the sports to where they wanted to be with the uh, RS 1800 as it is now. And they must have had a bit of a meeting after a, a year or so and thought, if we just go to Mexico, we can keep the rubber spoiler on it. And because they, they had a white spoiler on the back as well. Don't oh, you yeah, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was unique to the RS 800, whereas this is a Mexico RS 2000 spoiler. So they were mm. making those by the thousand load. Mm. So a, a bit of a, a budget down on it. Then, and they developed it out of the Mexico then because it was it was the majority of the car already other than the engine. Mm. Oh, that's an awesome thing, man. Yeah, I think I've only seen like, well, they're, they're, there's so little of them. Like, you know, you don't get to see them all the time, do you? Like, no, and a lot of right. them are in Ireland. But yeah, nah, fair play to you for getting your hands on one, man. <laughs> hey, the engine's really well built, it's just not super power, so you know, it's yeah. just standard cams. Um, but I mean, compared to, say, a 140 brake cross flow, it's got like, a, this yeah. would be better, like, it just sounds better. Yeah, and torque and, yeah, I think and the power and the torque are pretty much what they are, but the engine delivers it in a better way. Yeah. Um, probably. If you tuned it up a bit more to the max, it's, the whole point of it is it's a bit. It would be a bit more reliable at a higher power, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a longer yeah, period yeah. of time. At 140 brake, you're not really going to benefit the 60 valve miss of it. It's, yeah, it's yeah. under tuned for what it needs to be. You know? Yeah. Whereas a cross flow at 140 brake is quite. That's quite quiet. a good level, isn't it? Yeah. Decent, decent um, spec. Yeah. What do these come with out of the box? Uh, I think it's like. Or something. It's oh just, really? Just yeah, oh, right. it's just around, just over 100. Like I say the RS2000 actually came with slightly more power. I mean. Oh right. But I say they're massively kind of de-restricted because they were on a twin choke. Yeah. It's just good to be able to say you've been for a spinning one like this. That's it? right. <laughs> it's like such a rare beast. You're not been in one over in Ireland, do you? Nah. Nah. You don't even see these, let alone you know, go for a spin in them. Sound good, doesn't it? It pulls better on the second half of the revs, doesn't it? Yeah. They've definitely got their own like noise, haven't they? Different tone, I think, yeah. yeah. It's very comfortable, like ride as well, isn't it's it? Like normal road car, really. yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. This is like luxury compared to what I'm used to. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's good. That's that's what I do like about it, as opposed to the modified Escorts. Is yeah. that it's, it's still quite a genuine kind of classic uh, with a racy kind of engine. Still 
standard suspension. <laughs> Even though it's a standard car, it's not, it doesn't feel like overly, like, like too much body roll or whatever. Yeah, I like. mean, if you really push it, it is, but not for a kind of normal driving, you know, not just a normal driver now. Can this one home too? Yeah. Yeah. I do a swap for Roger. <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like Cat would say no. <laughs> <laughs> probably would. No radio, no speakers, no aircon. I'll give you Roger and Cat for this car. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much, sir. That's all right. No <laughs> First and last ride in an RS800. <laughs> Well, what did you think of that lot then? What an awesome fleet of old school motors. I want to send a massive thanks out to Stuart for taking the time out to show us around. And that's probably not the last we're going to see of Newtown Motor Engineers on the channel because I'm probably going to be sending one of my cars down there to have some work done. I just need to figure out which car and which jobs. But if any of you guys are in the Gosport area and you need a proper decent mechanic to work on your classic or modern car, or if you need any sort of rust repair or anything like that doing, definitely get in touch with Stuart and the guys at Newtown Motor Engineering and definitely let them know that I sent you. I will of course leave all their links and their contact details in the description. That's all I've got for this video. If you did think it was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, click subscribe if you're new, feel free to follow me on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram, check out my website for merch and parts, massive massive thanks as always to my patrons for your ongoing support, I'll leave all the links to everything in the description along with my email address for anyone who wants to contact me, but other than that, until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>